Hey guys and welcome back. We're going to cover a few questions today off the mathematical knowledge portion of the ASVAB. Now remember, the mathematical knowledge portion is not so much word problems as it is straight mathematical content. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. Keep going back and forth on if we should do this one by just plug and chugging these answers in or if we should solve it out. But since it's a math channel, I'm just going to show you what it looks like to solve it all the way out. So first thing we're going to do is expand these. X minus 7 squared. So we do, essentially we're doing X minus 7 times X minus 7. So X times X is going to give me X squared. X times negative 7 is negative 7X plus another negative 7X for a negative 14X. Then we got negative 7 times negative 7, which is a positive 49. Um, we still have that minus 4. Then we're looking at over here, again, x times the x is x squared, um, 1x, and then we're going to be doing another one for a second x, so that's plus 2x's, and then 1 times 1 is just going to be 1. Now our goal is to get all of these so we just have an x by itself. Something that's nice here is when we subtract this to the other side, it's going to be x squared minus x squared, which means those are just going to cancel out. All right. I'm going to get all my x's over here, so I'm going to add 14x to both sides. Um, and that's going to end up giving me a total of 16x over here. Why well, they cancel over here? 49 minus 4 is going to give me 45. But then minus this 1 when I move it to the other side is actually going to give me 44. Now, if you didn't know, 16 times 2 is going to give me 32. So if I'm looking at 2.5 here, um, 4 is going to be way too high. So these are out. Um, but if I'm looking at either two and a half or two and three fourths, it's one of those two answers here. Uh, 16 times two is 32. Half of 16 is eight. If I add another eight to this, it would put me up to 40, which is still not high enough. So that means A is out, which means our final answer is B. Number 12 on the ASVAB, it's not too bad here. It says a circle has a radius of five inches. Remember, radius is only half of this guy right here. So it's saying that's five inches. Then it says, what is the approximate area of this circle? So in this case, one of the area formulas that you really should just know is that the area of a circle is equal to pi times the radius squared. So usually people just say pi r squared. Um, in this case, we said that the radius was 5. So if I take that and I plug that in for our r, then what we're looking at is pi times 5. 5 squared. So 5 squared is not too bad. That's just 25. And when we're looking at pi, usually people will just use this estimate of 3.14, although it goes on longer than that. So really, we just got to multiply these two numbers together. Now, looking at our options here, we can kind of guesstimate this by just saying, let's just start with 3 times 25. Well, 2 times 25 is 50. Another 25 is 75. So we know it's going to be slightly larger than 75. Well, that counts this guy out, this guy out, and that's way too large. So our final answer here is going to be a 78.5 inches so number 13 says to solve the following inequality now for the most part these should be pretty easy it's just like solving a regular equation the only difference is this guy will switch directions if you ever multiply or divide both sides by a negative number um, so let's go ahead and take a look here. Let's start off, I think this is going to be easy to just distribute this because notice how they're each by threes. So if I divide six by three and nine by three and then multiply by two, that's the same thing as multiplying by two or three. So let's start off there. So if I divide six by three, that gives me two times two is four X. Nine divided by three is three times two is six. So that's going to be minus six. Then we still have that plus four that was on the outside. And then on the other side of the equation, we have that 5x plus 1. Now let's go ahead. We're going to combine these two, make it a negative 2, negative 6 and positive 4. Now I'm going to try to get everything to the same side. So I'm going to subtract my 4 to this side. Um, actually, it looks like the x is over here. So yeah, you know what? We're going to get x by itself. So subtract x to this side, um, subtract 4x from both sides. That gives me 5x minus that is just x. And I'm going to subtract the 1 from both sides as well. So we have this negative 2 from combining those two. Minus this will be negative 3. So we end up having that x is less than negative 3. Now be careful because the x is on the left-hand side over here. So you kind of got to flip the whole thing, but still make the point face towards the x. So this is our final answer, which means we're looking at D. 
So for 14 here, it says it has a tube that has a radius of three inches. Now remember, radius is only half of this guy here, so that's gonna be a radius of three, and a height of five inches. So when you're talking a tube, we're looking at a cylinder here, um, and they're saying that the height of this cylinder is five. What's the approximate volume? So how do you find volume of a cylinder? Well, essentially you're just taking the area of this circle and stacking it on top of each other over and over. So you can find the area of the circle and then multiply that by whatever the height is. So what is the area of a circle? Well, in that case, it's just pi times the radius squared. Then you go ahead and you multiply that by whatever the height is. So we're going to end up taking that final thing and multiplying it by five. So let's take a look here, starting off here, um, r squared. It looks like these are pretty spread out right off the bat. So I'm going to use an approximation of three instead of 3.14 because I don't have a calculator and I just want to make it easier. Um, r squared, well, that's five. So we're sorry. No, it's not. It's three. Can't read my own writing. Three squared, three times three is nine, times this three would end up giving me 27. And then we still have this five, so I'm gonna do five times the 27. Well, five times 27 is very close to five times 25, which is 125. So do I have any answers here that are pretty close to 125, but a little bit larger? It looks like I do, and it's the only one that's even close to that, so I'm gonna say the answer here is B and save us some time. So realistically here, 15 is just a vocab question, all right? It says triangle ABC, we see it right here, shown above is a what type of triangle? It has right triangle, equilateral triangle, scalene triangle, isosceles triangle. Let's start from the bottom and go through these. So isosceles means that you have two exact sides that are the same. So two of these side lengths would be the exact same. Now this does look to have these two to be true, but we don't know that because it doesn't officially tell us any of the side lengths, so we don't know. So we can't confirm this at all. Scalene means that none of the three sides are the same length. Again, these could be, we just don't know, so it can't be that guy right there. Equilateral means all three have to be equal. Now, this doesn't even look like that's the case, um, and I don't think it can be the case because we have a... Uh, right angle here, but let's, uh, that's a whole nother conversation. It's not going to be B either. So that means that it has to be a right triangle. So what is a right triangle? It means any triangle that has a 90 degree angle, also known as a right angle. It does mark this little square, which is an iconic way of saying, hey, this is a right angle. This is always the sign they use to mark a right angle. So that means A is our final answer. Hey guys, that's all we're going to cover for today, but remember, you can always click on any of these videos over here to help you keep studying for your next attempt on the ABVAC.